You're probably used to installing Windows when building or refurbishing a PC, or maybe a Linux distribution like Kali or Arch if you're more of a power user. Ooh. But did you know there's another option that's especially useful if you have an older, lower spec computer kicking around? It's called Chrome OS Flex. And yes, it's quite similar to the Chrome OS that comes with Chromebooks that you buy off the shelf, if things come to that. But why exactly would you wanna put it on a PC you already own in the first place? Well, the reason we mentioned older, lower spec computers a few seconds ago is because these machines can have trouble running modern versions of Windows like 10 or 11. The recommended requirements for Chrome OS Flex, on the other hand, are very basic. You just need any X64 CPU from 2010 or later, four gigs of RAM, 16 gigs of storage, and the ability to boot from USB for installation. That's it. And although Google maintains a rather comprehensive list of certified systems that it's tested with Chrome OS Flex, any non-certified PC should run it just fine as long as it meets the minimum requirements. Why is that? Well, you can get away with having such low-end specs because like the regular Chrome OS, Flex is a mostly cloud-based operating system that runs lightweight web-based apps like Google Docs, meaning much of the processing is being done on a Google server rather than on your own PC. And because the interface is very similar to Android, most folks will be far more comfortable with it than other free operating systems like Ubuntu or Linux Mint. Not to mention, it can be a great choice for less tech-savvy users who just need a machine to browse the internet and watch videos, since you can't install random applications that might contain malware. Speaking of security, Chrome OS Flex is actually the successor to another operating system called Cloud Ready. But unlike Cloud Ready, Chrome OS Flex gets updates at the same time as regular Chromebooks, so you shouldn't remain vulnerable to newly emerging threats. However, there are some important differences from pre-built Chromebooks and other caveats you should be aware of, which we'll tell you about right after we thank Brilliant for sponsoring this video. Brilliant is a hands-on and interactive way to learn STEM topics. They offer thousands of courses with new topics to learn each month, like their everyday math course. You just, you need it, you just, it's for normal things. Simply honing your ability to learn and think will translate into everyday aspects of life. Their services can be used to supplement a college education, or you can use it to just broaden your knowledge just because. That's an axiomatic good. The first 200 people to head to brilliant.org slash techquickie will get 20% off an annual premium subscription. If you're trying to install Chrome OS Flex on anything that has an ARM CPU, such as the Surface Pro X, or an M1 or M2 MacBook, for some reason, you're out of luck, since it requires a white bread X64 CPU from AMD or Intel. Another thing to remember is that unlike the vanilla Chrome OS, there's no native Android app support, so don't expect it to be exactly like a variant of your smartphone with a physical keyboard, even though that's exactly what I want in a smartphone. There are also other little snags you might run into. It has no support for biometrics, optical drives, or Thunderbolt ports, and Linux apps, which a good number of folks like to run on their Chromebooks, may not work on Chrome OS Flex if you're using hardware that's particularly underpowered. But if you're cool with these limitations, it's good to note that not only is it easy to run on a single PC, but you can also quickly deploy it to a large number of computers over a network if you're doing something like running a business. According to Google, a hotel chain in Europe was able to install it on 2,000 computers in two days, making it a heck of a lot cheaper than, you know, buying 2,000 new PCs or buying 2,000 new Windows licenses. I don't know about you, but I'm really not keen on paying 130 bucks just to talk to Cortana during work hours, even if she is just here to help. I'm judging. Bring back Clippy and bring yourself back here for another video when this one's over, which it is now. Thanks for watching. Like the video if you liked it, dislike it if you dislike it. Check out our other videos, comment below with video suggestions, and don't forget to subscribe and follow TechWeek. I know that's a lot of things to ask, but I mean, this is free, so.